Swampland. <laughs> they call it the Everglades. I don't know what that means, but he assures me a little bit of dirt will dry it right up. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. All right, cool. Ma Mark, I think you're mu you're muted for me for some reason, although it doesn't say you're muted. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear but Mark? I don't think we can hear Mark. Uh, it's choppy. Yeah, you're breaking in and out. Okay. Hold on there you go. You're there in you now. You go. You're good now. In? Okay. Don't touch anything. <laughs> exactly. Um, Henry, I'm away the next couple of days. Oh, you are? Okay. Thursday, Thursday evening. So if you want to have a call maybe Friday or next week, then just let me know when it works Perfect. for you. Well, I was going to put an email kind of summarizing what we had talked about. Start there. Make sure that yeah. we're on the same page and then we'll go from there. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. All right. All right. So let's get started. Um, I think we're streaming. We're recording. Everything's ready to go. I'll give a little intro. And then we'll get started with the session. So uh, welcome to anyone out there viewing on the interweb. This is uh, the Business pa Podcast Mastermind. We started with a few talented friends in the business and podcasting space who expanded to create a weekly event where a wider audience can join. Um, Henry Lopez and I are the, the hosts for today. Uh, we're missing Rob Greenlee, uh, but I'll introduce him just to give him a little uh, cred there. Uh, he, Rob is the VP of Content and Partnerships at Libsyn, former chair of the Podcast Academy, co-host of the New Media Show, and longtime evangelist of the podcasting industry. Um, Henry, who will be kind of taking the reins a little bit today, is a serial entrepreneur, small business coach, and host of the top-rated How of Business podcast, dedicated to helping others start, run, and grow their small business. And I'm Ethan Janney. I uh, do some business and executive coaching, and I'm also co-host of two podcasts right now, Edge of NFT podcast and the Run With It podcast, and uh, without further ado, uh, we'll we'll jump on in here. You know what, what we do here is we like to talk to people about uh, podcasting and all the wonderful, wild and wonderful things you can do with it, um, and how to grow revenue and audiences and things like that. So I hand it over to Henry, who has invited our guest for today, Giuseppe. So tell us a little bit about Giuseppe there. Yeah, before we do that, you, you, we got to add Mark to your little intro. Did you introduce him when I wasn't listening? We I don't have an intro for Mark, but well, well, you introduce not. yourself, Mark. <laughs> yeah, tell us an intro. Do a brief intro, Mark. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Ethan. Um, so my name is Mark Hayward. I have a podcast called Absolute Business Mindset with over 340-odd episodes. Um, I have a business uh, guest business where we match guests with podcasts. I do business coaching, and I also do property in the UK. Wonderful. Thanks. You're welcome. And thanks, Ethan. All right. So Giuseppe has uh, done uh, us a great favor by being with us today because he doesn't need to be putting up with the grilling we're about to give him. But no, this is going to be a great sharing of information. Let me give you a quick bio on Giuseppe and then we'll get into it. Uh, Giuseppe is an experienced business owner and a franchise consultant. That's how I've come to know him. He's a franchise veteran and he simplifies the process of franchising and excels at guiding his clients to the model that best suits them. That's, that's what a, a good franchise consultant does. Uh, his greatest joy is helping people realize the American dream and sharing the freedom that comes from franchising. Giuseppe launched his podcast, the Franchise Freedom Podcast, which is focused on helping corporate executives. That's kind of one of his niche markets who are tired of the rat race, the politics, and the lack of control inside the corporate monster and are ready to break free by owning a franchise. He's also the author of a book entitled Franchise Freedom. So the way I came to meet Giuseppe is he was a guest on my show, as a lot of us have made so many connections, right? Including this group of us here. He was a guest on my show. I really like what he had to say about franchising. I've been a student of franchising for a long time. My very first business back in 1991 was a franchise, a pizza chain franchise. And, uh, and so then we stay connected and then we've done an affiliate venture, which we'll touch on here in this conversation as well, which has been successful so far. We just started that not too long ago. And then about two months ago, I was on the path to deciding what business I was going to launch next here locally, where I live in Florida, I hit a wall on that. And that's when I thought, you know what, let me, let me talk to Giuseppe about a potential franchise. So he now is also my franchise consultant as I've been going through that search. So with all that said, Giuseppe, welcome. 
Thank you, Henry. Your, your homework is due. You said you're a good student, so I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> th th thanks for having me, guys. This is a, it's an honor, and looking looking forward to it. Absolutely. Yeah, I got, I got to make a decision, right? Right. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> On a franchise, <laughs> it's a process. You know, I've, I've gone through it before. People don't realize the value of a good franchise consultant. Uh, a lot of people also don't realize that they get paid similar to what a real estate broker does, which is not by me, the, the client, but by the franchisor pays him a fee if, if, and when he happens to place me with a franchise. So it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of consultation that could end up with no money sometimes, but you know, so you have to have the right personality to want to be consultative in the approach. So, um, Let's just, we're going to focus about the podcast and why the podcast and where you're at. And then we're here obviously as well to ask you questions. The way we usually do this is I'll ask some questions and then the rest of the group is going to chime in as something comes into their minds, uh, especially as it relates to podcasting. Why did you decide to start the podcast? First of all, when did you start the podcast? We started uh, around uh, uh, January uh, 2020. January 2020. And I think you're at about 66 episodes, right? Right. Live. Right. Right. Why did you start the podcast? Someone told me I had a face for radio, so I <laughs> decided to uh, to continue with it. Now, just uh, looking at different marketing strategies and said, you know what, what I love to talk. I love the radio and I, I actually joined a, um, an agency, the Unstoppable CEO uh, and the owner, Steve Gordon, just really spoke to me. I really liked his, his approach said that a, pod, a podcast, all the benefits of a podcast, it's, it's also great for networking. We wrote a book from transcription, uh, transcribing, excuse me, the, uh, the podcast and was just blown away how it was, it was multi-purpose, multi-use. And uh, it's a lot of evergreen content that we have out there. So um, listened to a couple of his, his podcasts, joined, joined them and he helped me launch last year. So had you been a guest on podcasts before that point in time? Uh, just two. I did two uh, two quick uh, interviews, and uh, it was interesting. You know, I was love uh, uh, telling the story and what I did, and and kind of how what, what my journey looked like. So that was it was nice to actually experience it. Although I was a guest, um, it was really nice to kind of go through the process and what it kind of uh, all entailed. All right. So the show itself now, tell us what role it's playing in lead generation and, and helping you with the franchise business? How are you using it? How is it helping? Yeah, I, I use it simply. I don't use it uh, to monetize. I don't believe I get any. Um, so I have no, no sponsorships right now. Uh, I do not generate a lot of leads from the show. Uh, primarily, my, my purpose is to network and meet people, uh, collaborate with them that have similar audiences. So people that maybe are looking at business ownership. Maybe it's not necessarily franchising, but they want a, a change. Career people in career transition, car people that are career pivoting, right? Changing it up during COVID. So um, I've used it to meet some really good people, maybe some people I, I could not have, have actually got on the phone prior to having the show. So uh, it's a great tool to get to get in front of some uh, some authors, even some authors that I probably just you know sent an e a message on LinkedIn, could never get a hold of them, but now I have them coming on the show. So mm -hmm. great for networking, collaborating, and uh, my lead flow, I, believe it or not, actually comes from when I'm invited on someone else's show. So as I, I'm a guest, um, and I didn't I didn't know that my first year in podcasting, I didn't really understand how I was kind of figuring it out, and noticed that as a guest, I am telling my story, um, as I did on on Henry's show the how of business. And we did get a lot of people that said, you know what, I'm in the same, same, same situation as you or similar situation. Can you help me? You really spoke to me. So, uh, so I really, so, so the podcast is really simple. We release a show once, uh, once a week, we email our entire audience once a month with all the past episodes, we post to social media as well, but it's really just to get really good content out there and, if anyone listening in would like, like an intro, I always make an introduction to any of my guests. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of details there. How big is that email list? Uh, it's around the thousand range. Okay. 
All right. Going back to the point you made, let me ask you this. When you first started, did you think it was going to generate leads, you know, within that first year? Does that, was that part of the idea then? No, I was told, I was told not to expect leads. Um, I was told, and it just happened to be launched during COVID, right? So a lot mm-hmm. of us, we couldn't even leave the house anyway for, for a period of time. So that was my networking, but uh, I was told not, to, obviously you will get some, something out of it. Don't, but don't, uh, don't, ex- don't kind of kill off all your other ways of, of generating uh, leads. Yeah. I may generate I- some leads, but it's going to be a, it's, it's definitely a long-term thing. And eventually once you're a guest, you can speak and um, you know, tell your story to the audience um, of that of that person that has you on their show. So, uh, so the expectation level, the ex- expectation was set in the very beginning. Not to expect a lot from it. Yeah, but Cindy, you touch on something we've talked about often in this mastermind, which is that as as a podcast host, we're we're balancing this, especially when we have guests making the guest shine, but we have to shine as well. We have to tell our story as well so that people will connect with us, which as you said, is happening more when you're a guest. Has that now, now that you've learned that, has that changed the way that you now conduct or the format of your show or how you even conduct an interview on your show? It, it has not changed it much. Um, we always have a pre kind of um, interview, a call prior to the show. I used to have people book right on the on the calendar to find that they just were not interested in collaborating. And you know, at the end of the day, this is we want to collaborate. We want to work together at some capacity. So we'll do a, a quick 15, 20 minute call before, for the most part. What do you mean by collaborate? Work together in, in some in some way or another. You know, if we if there's a way of helping one another right. out, whether it be your audience, you know, you're an author on entrepreneurship. I've had some, some authors, uh, you know, over the years. So how can we work together where maybe I can help your audience? So if you're speaking with someone or, or one of your fans is saying, I'm, I read your book, but I'm stuck. I'd like to know maybe a little bit more. I, I want that handholding a service that you may not offer. You know, they can come back and say, well, I, I had this, you know, I spoke with Giuseppe, Giuseppe can help you throughout the whole process. And it's not just about franchising. It's really, Kind of helping you make that decision. So, okay. Um, that, 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 I hope that answers. So, so yeah. Well, it start, starts. Uh, I'm going yeah, to come yeah. back to this because I want to explore more your process, especially sure. how you vet interviews. But of the 66 episodes, I did a quick scan. I've listened to some of them. Most of them are interviews. You do some topics. What, what's the mix and what's the idea there? Yeah, some of the topics I'll I'll try to do those. I don't really have a set schedule on those, but just to talk about certain things. So COVID was a was a big one. Um, a lot of questions I was getting, uh, a lot of, of the similar questions on my phone call, similar concerns. So I decided to break it down a little bit and say, okay, let's talk about these top three or top five questions that I get on a daily basis. So um, really, as I'm kind of stepping back, the the show really is to is to network, meet people and get in front of other audiences. But I, on occasion, uh, do some evergreen solo episodes to kind of, to cover those three to five common questions. I get the whole, you know, during COVID, a lot of people were talking about career transition and pivoting. So I did an episode of that. And then I even took advantage and I uh, wrote a book and the most common remark on my book was it's a great book. Thank you. So I followed with, did you read the book? And the answer was 90% of the time, no, <laughs> did not have time to read it. And I said, that's concerning, you know, since yeah. you're so serious in making a decision. So I did an audio version. It's not an actual audio book, but it's the key takeaways and process and my story. And, and I that's said, one okay. of the episodes, or do you have that like standalone? I, I don't, I haven't seen that on your site. We, we did a solo episode, maybe mm. four or five back. And it okay. was uh, kind of an overview of the franchise oh, yeah. freedom I see process. That, yeah. So, Wait, I, so why don't you do more topic episodes? I'm curious. I know that, for example, for me, initially, it was a lack of confidence. Like I, I would think, well, who wants to listen to just me? I, I, so I kind of, to some extent, the interview was a crutch, although I still predominantly do interviews. But what are your thoughts there? Why don't you do more solo episodes? That's a good question. I have more than plenty of, of, of content and material. Uh, And I'm trying to keep it short and sweet. So I'm actually using that in in email of the emails we send out and the social media posts. 
Uh, the book covers quite a bit to the point where it get, gives you a little bit of interest. And then if you want to continue with the conversation, they can contact us directly. So um, I don't, I like to get in depth on, on certain topics, but I don't want it to be where most of the people that come to me, they have just way too much information. They're overwhelmed. They have no idea what direction to go. So I'll just say, you know what, stop what you're doing. Let's set up a 20 minute call just to see if it's a right fit. So I don't want to give people too much information and then they start going off in different directions. So I keep the, the uh, information concise and let's talk about how to apply it to Henry uh, situation. So Henry, let's get on a call and say, okay, this is, this is a, 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 we could have done a show about funding or another show about legal. Let's talk about your current situation, how it applies specifically to you. So right. I try to tailor it as much as possible. Well, I get that. But what, what I'm trying to get at Giuseppe is that, you know, you've seen the evidence that you're finding a lot of success when you go on somebody else's show, when you're the focus, when you get to tell a bit more about your story. And of course, you can't tell your story every time you do an episode, but it's just it's just something I'd like you to think about. And I was just curious as to maybe there was another reason why you hadn't done more just you talking episodes, not with a guest. Yeah. Yeah, it just just wasn't part part of the uh, the original strategy for uh, networking and speaking to other okay. audiences. Um, All right, I'm going to move am, into. Yeah, ahead, I've sorry. done more. Yeah, so that's yeah. something that I'm looking into. But I'm going to move into your production process and how you promote an episode. But Ethan or Mark, any questions that come to mind at this point? Yeah, I had a couple. Um, one was kind of just a little bit more detail on the writing a book from the podcast transcriptions. Mm -hmm. Um, I know some of us have like a, and not, not, not to make this feel too, too sensitive, but some of us have like a release form that we give to guests. Some of us don't, you know, but it's kind of like implicit. Like, did you find that you had to go deep into that before you released the book of transcriptions and, you know, sort of feel like you had to get a release from everybody or you just kind of went forward with it. Nobody objected and everything's fine. Yeah, it did, didn't apply to, to me. Uh, those were uh, solo episodes that we did. It, was, it wasn't uh, when right. we had a guest. Uh, okay, um, okay. So good question. Yeah, we, we didn't have, for, for the book, we kind of had an outline. So that was part of the, the first few episodes. So it's more of the evergreen content. So hmm. we had a, an outline and then we had a copywriter go in and, and make the edits and, and uh, ask for additional information. So good question. Cool. Yeah, that definitely makes it a lot easier. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a funny thing. I mean, and again, this is sort of off topic from your actual personal experience, but uh, this idea of getting people to kind of like sign or agree to a release that their interview is sort of now your content. I feel like it's sort of implicit when people go on podcasts and at the same time, if they look at the language of it, you know, and it's like, I can use this because you kind of have to be very cautious as the as mm -hmm. the user of the content to make sure that you don't run into a situation where you use something and people have a problem with it. Right. So you need to say, like, in per perpetuity and all media heretofore uh, invented and in the future invented, you know, we want to use anything and everything you've given us. And it's kind of like when people see that, they're like, they kind of, they freeze a little. <laughs> Just um, as a practical note on that, Ethan, and this was guidance I had gotten. So I have a full disclaimer on my website, but then when you schedule your interview appointment, it asks the question, have you read and do you accept the disclaimer? Mm -hmm. And Got you it. have to check yes or no. Now, again, right. that, how that would stand up in court, I don't know. But, uh, but at least I have something that speaks to that point that I own this content. Yeah, totally. And I, t I did talk to an IP uh, lawyer at one point um, about a different project, actually, where I very, it's, a, it's, a mo it's, it's directly monetized. People yeah. give lectures and things like that. Mm -hmm. and, and she did say, you know, you know th there's different laws around when things are created. When you co-create something, if it's an interview, technically, the, the people who are co-creating it may mm -hmm. have a stake in it, right? right. Which yeah, is sort exactly. of off the law. And actually another interesting thing, I will move on from this because it's not exactly on Giuseppe's uh, point, but um, the, uh, the other part of it is uh, th there's actually legal cases where uh, a person did not have rights to a photo that was taken on their camera mm. um, of a gorilla because <laughs> the gorilla 
uh, was holding the camera and pressed the button. <laughs> and so by law, the person who presses the button is the person who actually owns the photo, the rights to the photo. Well, even, it's hilarious, yeah, yeah. isn't it? It's, uh, <laughs> so, it's a great model for IP. I mean, like, <laughs> exactly. Nobody's anyway, going to forget that. Yeah. Right. Anyway, sorry. This is, again. A, yeah, no, but but no, in all seriousness, I think that I, I recommend that everybody have some kind of ignite. And I've only had one person. It was actually this the lady I interviewed who's the head of EOS Worldwide. Their legal department got involved and said, well, does this mean you own uh, the, you know, the copyrights to EOS? It's like, no, I'm not saying that. Yeah. But it's an issue. All right. Anyway, let's it's, go just, back. just on that point, yes. it's, a, it's an interesting one because um. Someone was talking on my podcast, which I've released today, about um, writing a book and transcribing a book, very similar to what you've done, Giuseppe. And they said, um, if you use content that had in interviews, either excerpts or uh, transcripts of the interview, if you could get the approval, which I'm assuming in most cases you would, because mm -hmm. they came onto your podcast, right. there's also availability for them to be able to publicize and sort of share because they have right. they've, they've got a way, a, a sort of publicity mm -hmm. part of the book being released as well. So I think it, it might be if Giuseppe, if you wanted to do another one and use your interviews, that might be a really good way mm -hmm. to get it out to a wider audience by leveraging their audience again. Right, right. Right, because I could That's see you enough. maybe even doing one, Giuseppe, just to follow along that thread of, uh, you know, case studies or examples. Mm -hmm. And like Mark said, as long as you quote me and reference me, I'm going to be excited that you've included me in a positive way mm -hmm. in your book. Right. Yeah. Right. But I love that idea of what, what Giuseppe did, because I've thought about doing that as well. I've got, you know, because we have all of this content that we're creating that flows very easily, relatively speaking. And, and to have somebody help us gather that and turn it into a book is a brilliant idea, I think. Yeah, yeah. just generally on the topic, too, I, I, I know that uh, just the way that my brain has worked over the past, you know, I don't know, 10, 15 years, um, it's more on the creation side of things as opposed to the mm -hmm uh, organizational made, maybe utilization set of things. And it's kind of a very interesting puzzle, right? When you have created a lot of content to try to say, okay, now what can I do with this? And it's actually interesting. Um, we may use some artwork that I created 10 years ago, hmm. um, as part of an NFT project that we're about to do. Right. And I have some music that I created like 10 years ago. And I often am always thinking like, how can I repurpose this? Repurpose. Like, is this going to be, especially for things that are like a little bit forward thinking, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes it's not going to go anywhere in the present, but in the future, it might be valuable. Yeah. The uh, whole repurposing point is a big one. Yeah. Right. I, I had one more just question. Just another question. To say, yeah. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead, Mark. Sorry, go on. I was just going to say about your guest strategies. So how do you get your guests? Is, is it, do you have how many do you have in the bank at the moment like, how how are you at the moment finding your guests yeah I, I had in the past i had an agency find my guests we had a um kind of what our ideal guest looks like they would create lists and i would have to approve it so i've continued with that strategy just have an excel uh, spreadsheet i do it on my own now and i just uh people that i i think of may, may be of interest so uh, I do have a couple solo planned. I have a couple franchisors, franchise companies uh, that I'd like to uh, maybe spotlight, or maybe they did something interesting during COVID or they're a pairing company, something unique. I'll have them on the show. And then as far as additional guests, these are just people I've networked with. A lot of my, a lot of my guests, I stay uh, um, in touch with at least on a monthly basis. And we're like, Hey, you know, the interview went well, I've been getting a lot of feedback. Do you, you know, would you recommend anyone else? Or sometimes I'll just follow someone like maybe I'll follow someone like Henry and say, he's got some really good guests. One's talking about funding and finance and stuff like that. I'd like to have him on the show. So I'll just reach out directly. So I like to have, I like to kind of um, batch them and, and do them all on Thursdays and Fridays as, as much as possible. And uh, always like to have at least kind of 10 in the bank so that if I do have a slow week, I took the last couple of weeks off of summer, I don't miss a beat. So uh, so typically 10, uh, this, this was a crazy year and I lost a little bit of, of momentum with change of, uh, marketing companies, but typically it's about 10 and you're just keeping it fresh. Just always asking people for recommendations. And 10 that you have lined up that are scheduled. Is that what you mean? 
Yes, 10, 10 scheduled and uh, we release one a week. So I always like to have 10 scheduled and maybe kind of five that have been recorded to, to be released. Okay. And, and my other question was um, about the planning for the future of your uh, podcast. Mm-hmm. Like you've, you've taken this niche of franchising, which I think is fantastic. We talk a lot on this about niching at, at least initially. And that's sort of my question. Like, do you, do you foresee you for you to remain purely in the franchise niche or are you looking to broaden to other types of business, entrepreneurship, management, careers, business, whatever? I actually, mo- most of my guests are not from the, uh, the franchising world. So I had mentioned franchise companies as, as one kind of um, segment or, or, or guests that I'm looking for, but for the most part, it may just be someone that has a really good story about career transition from corporate to uh, business owner to entrepreneur. Uh, so a lot of the guests do have nothing to do with franchising at all. So it's called the, the show is called Franchise Freedom, which we've also thought about possibly changing the, the name of the show. Uh, but a lot of the stories are, are from people that may like the idea of systems in place, but are, are not in the franchise world. And I would say, actually, at this point, I think a large percentage have not owned the franchise or are part of that industry. Why would you change the name? I don't know. I, I'm thinking it's a little bit too specific. Um, why I say that is because when I am uh, applying to be a guest, most people don't even read my email or don't even look at the form. They just look at the title franchise freedom. So they're like, I have no, no experience in franchising. And it's like, well, it's not about franchising. It's about entrepreneurship. It's about the value I bring to the table and showing you if, you know, how to figure out if business ownership is the right fit for you. And once I have a chance to explain it, they're like, okay, actually you are a great fit. So I'm, I've been playing with the idea of either changing the name or launching a, a second podcast, um, you know, without the name franchise in it. Maybe we talk about success stories, uh, but that it just had way too much on my plate. So I haven't had a chance to kind <laughs> yeah. of dive into Classic a second show. All right. I'm going to dive into more into the production process, but did you have a follow-up question, Mark? Are you good right now? Um, I suppose one, sorry, one last thing I was just thinking was um, as you as you broadened it to a wider audience, um, do you think, yeah, because I, I was just thinking about that, that, that name, it, it can be troubling for your audience if they're looking for pure franchise stuff. It, it might be something, and I'm not telling you what you should or shouldn't do, but it just we've often thought about this and I, I've thought about my title, Absolute Business Mindset, being a little bit broad and, and that's part of my appeal now is that when people look back my my past guests they'll see that there's a digital marketer there's a youtuber there's a salesperson there's a property a real estate guy there's there's a quite a breadth so they know what they're going to get with my podcast and I think that's what's attracted the breadth of audience um it would just be a shame if people do read that and don't automatically think oh Giuseppe's podcast is going to be definitely for me so I think I think it is something to think about right. just just I to agree. prevent that conversation that you're having with them so mm-hmm. um it's just an idea I appreciate that yeah someone else brought that up so I've been I've been toying with that and yeah just I, I have to figure that out I got to spend some time there but I, I do appreciate that but you could rebrand. I don't know where Henry's right. gone, but you could rebrand <laughs> rather than set up a new podcast. Like that, right. Correct. That, that, yeah, that would that. be my thought. Yeah. To launch another one, just, <laughs> I don't think there's enough time for that, but I would definitely rebrand 100%. Yeah. It's an interesting conundrum. Um, you do have that since you do have that niche for yourself, mm-hmm. like, there is something useful about, about having that in the name. Um, yeah, Henry probably just hit the wrong button or something like that, or his battery died. <laughs> He's a pro. He's a pro. <laughs> I, I I was curious about. Um, uh, you said you go on other podcasts, and uh, you know, as a podcaster, and maybe everyone else has experienced this. There's sort of different types of guests you get. I've noticed there's a type of guest who has like a thing that they want to say, right? And and it's like if if it, the podcast does not a platform where they can kind of say what they want to say. Oh, I've got a book. Let me Mm -hmm. talk about my book. Right. Then they don't want to go on the podcast. And then there are more people who are sort of just interested in going on a podcast to have a conversation, get some exposure, talk about whatever the topic is at hand. Mm -hmm. And I was curious, you know, what's your approach? Do you have kind of a, you know, for lack of a better word, like a spiel, you really want to make sure you're focused so you don't waste your time. If you can give your spiel, you'll give your spiel. 
or you're kind of just going out there and you know, whatever you can, you can get together. You have a fun conversation. Yeah. That that's, that's a, again, very great question. It's just a conversation. I, I like the conversation. I enjoy the questions. Um, so I do not, I don't go in saying, okay, I'm Giuseppe, you know, franchise guide and fran- it's franchising all the way. You know, we, like to keep it conversational. I'll always ask, Hey, by the way, I have a book that a free book I would like to offer your audience. Is that okay? So I'll I'll ask that ahead of time. Um, we'll talk about my expertise, my story and where I can help typically right before the show, but it's very conversational. Um, a lot of what I have to do has, has nothing to do with just franchising in in general. It's more of the mindset. It's more of, Hey, hey, I want to own a business. Where do I start? And I don't just dive in and say, okay, this is where you start. You start, I I say, stop a second. Why the hell do you want to own a business? And people are kind of thrown back by that. So um, I get a lot of people saying, you you caught my attention when you said that, because I have no idea why the heck I want to own a business. I just want to own it because I hate, I hate my job or, and I said, well, the grass isn't always greener. Uh, 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 You know, I don't know. I have not met, I'm going to be 43. I have met a lot of business owners. I network like crazy. I have yet to meet someone who wants a business. I don't know if you've met or ever met a, a, a someone, but no one ever wants a business. You know, I, I found a lot of people um, say they're unemployable. Unemployable? Well, I, I was going to say they need a business, but yes, yeah. they, right. <laughs> so I, I jokingly say that because you know I had black hair when I started my journey, and now it's it's ninety percent white. So. Um, it's, it's a lot of work, but you know, a a question I say is, do you prefer to sign the front of the check or the back, back of the check? And people kind of stop and say, oh, that's, that's a, that's a good question. But I, 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 I I tell stories and that's how I enjoy. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. Sorry. It was just a follow up. I was going to say, how much structure do you put into your podcast? Do you have a set questions or is it fluid to the guest? And like you said, you might be a little bit provocative in some of your questioning to, to shock them into the moment. How much structure do you have? There's, a, there's actually a lot of, I, I do have a structured document. So it's called a kind of a, what do we name it? A guest sheet. So it has the name. It has, you know, all their contact information, three things that we want to discuss, which we talk about prior to, to recording um, I have a structure of at the very end, how do we collaborate? When's the next time we can talk? So I do have a lot of structure while keeping the, the bulk of it conversational, but I do make sure to cover background of the person. I always talk about the person's um, journey from if they went from em- employee to employer. So we definitely talk about the key, always three or four key areas. And then we add in maybe an additional story or you know, something fun about the guests and just make it fun and conversational. But although, although conversational, I do have a a one page document that I print out. It's old school. I put in a binder and I review every single guest every single week and go through and say, okay, who haven't I connected with? Who, who can I uh, refer someone to was on Henry's show. And I've made some uh, recommendations to, to Henry Henry, I think you should, you should talk to Rocky Lalvani from Profit First, I think is who I referred him to. And I always like to bring one or two ideas. And hopefully, you know, Henry comes back and says, great. You know what? I think I have two other guests that you, you may have on your show. So I do that on a, I try to do that almost every single week. And I just do a full review of every guest. And by the way, guys, if that stuff I said about Henry earlier, just, uh, just yeah, between you and me. It's John um, and I was, I was listening oh, to Henry. the live stream. Oh, my gosh. What's going on? There you are. <laughs> Henry went. To, did you go to lunch, Henry? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just as, you know, talk about miscommunication. My wife had had our illustrious internet company come to check on our line today because we're not getting anywhere near the bandwidth we're supposed to. But she didn't recall me saying I was going to be on a freaking Zoom call. <laughs> so, nice. yeah, nice. Good time. Welcome back. We, we were fine. We we're fine. Where, but, but, where are but, you guys? Bring me up. To it was miserable without you, but I know you're without my leadership. Right. We just sat in silence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you guys get into more of the process, production process? I've got some questions there, but what did you guys cover already? Yeah, we Sorry. were just talking about kind of, yeah, it, telling his story and other podcasts, like a little bit how he goes about that, whether it's more scripted or, or more impromptu and, and the sort of the same thing for his own podcast, you know, how does okay. he run that? 
So yeah. uh, how scripted is it for your when you bring somebody on, Giuseppe? You know, you know, you've seen my preparation, which is at one extreme of the spectrum, where I've outlined the questions. How do you prepare for an interview? Yeah, we we, we were just saying very just kind of three three different items that we like to to uh, discuss. Okay, uh, bring it up pre pre interview, and then we make it very conversational, and I try to bring the conversation back. So that helps with the show notes. Um, adding links. If there's anything they want to promote, they can do it at the very end. So it's very structured how they can get a hold of you. If you have something to promote, I always, <clears throat> I always do that at the very end. And I include that in the show notes with all the links and everything else. So you're uh, doing a, a pre interview for every single interview, correct? Well, when I, I try to, um, and when I, what I, what I meant by pre interview there was right, right before. So right before, okay, just the before the call, you allow enough time there to have how long of a conversation. Right. Five, five or 10 minutes. Okay. Interview goes from maybe 30 to 40. And then we wrap up for another five or five or 10. So it's about an hour. You've decided already that this is a potential fit because you've vetted them before you even reached out to them. Correct. Whatever your process is, including, is there a networking opportunity here? Is there a way that we can help each other? Is there anything else that stands out that you look for to determine if they're a good guest potential or not? Uh, you know, we got to have a good conversation, right? If the conversation's rough, I've had a few that were. But how do? But you don't know that ahead of time, do you? Have you had some that you recorded that you didn't release? Uh, no, I think we've recorded every single one. But if I've if I had someone scheduled, um, and we do a pre, let's do a twenty minute just to make sure we're on the same page. I've had a few of those, maybe two or three, and I said, you know what? I don't I don't think we're we're, okay. we're a good fit. Just not Awkward, open, but that's good. very that makes one sense. directional. And it just, yeah. I didn't feel like it was going to flow well. Um, that's why I got into business, right? So to work, <laughs> work with people that I enjoy working with. Agreed. So we'll just, we'll just say, you know what? Let's not a good fit. Let's just move on. All right. Tell By me about way, the production process. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. Really here. You missed yeah. it. Because Giuseppe said that he hadn't really met anybody that said they wanted a business. <laughs> I would say I wanted a business. I'll just say that. Because <laughs> there's this one guy, Ethan. Now, I don't know if I still uh, you, you want a business. It. You killed the story. I'm now just saying, I like, somebody. <laughs> I just remember specifically, this was years ago when I was just out of college and I was talking to my buddy who he, he had a contracting business, you know, and I would help him out. I'd do some drywall or whatever. And, um, and I, I told him, like, I want to have a business someday. And at the time, I was a piano tuner. You know, I would go around to people's houses and I would tune pianos. And he'd say, what do you mean? You have a business. What are you mm -hmm. talking about? Right? Like, you're going around and ask, like, ah, you know, I want a business where, like, other people work, you know, to help make something happen. And that, that was, and I was very proud once that got started. Now, the headaches that ensued, I can agree. <laughs> I don't know if... I don't oh, yeah. know if uh, if I'll always like feel so great about them when I when I lose sleep over it. But um, anyways, that, that's my side of it. You can choose to include that or not in your. Uh, <laughs> that's in your it. I met, I met someone that wants a business. That's <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, production process. Uh, tell me about the editing. Who does it? Uh, that whole process. What does that look like for you? Yeah, I I've, I've currently have an agency that um, I'll record on StreamYard. They'll um, they'll make the edits. Um, there's also video, so they'll post on the various. What do we use? Buzzsprout. Put it up on YouTube and create social posts. So we're we're working on new strategy going forward. We've made some some changes and how we want to put social media out there. So uh, the edits are minimal, by the way. I like the. The ums, the uhs, the uh, I just had someone that they, they were getting their house clean and the there was someone cleaning right behind them. I thought it was the funniest thing. We left it. I, I think <laughs> it's natural. Uh, not everyone agrees with it. That's 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 just my personality and, and how kind of conversational and easygoing I am. So um, so they'll make a few edits at the intro outro, which talks about if you have any questions or you want the book. These are the links. So we keep it very, very simple. And uh, we'll typically do a, a 60 or, tw or, or two, uh, I'm sorry, one or two minute little reel uh, on the episode, a couple touch a couple points, and then we'll release the, uh, one new episode every Wednesday. And now we're talking about doing more with the episodes, you know, all this great content is there. So maybe using more quotes from the book and the podcast, uh, and just, you know, just really reusing a lot of the content and repurposing it. So that's kind of uh, our conversation, I think, later this week is how do we do that. But 
I've outsourced to um, other companies before. They've done a decent job. The agency kind of does it all since they can extract what quotes and information they want. So yeah, um, I don't do any of the edits my, my, myself at, at this time. So your investment of time is you know, finding the people that you want to invite, doing whatever research you're doing there, preparing for the interview, conducting right. the interview, and then you pass it off to this agency. Yeah, put it right in Google Drive and they take it from there. Yep. Got it. Got it. Can I follow up and ask uh, if you could share what agency you use and potentially costs involved? And again, you don't have to share any of that, but curious if just for our... Uh, Reference. Costs, yeah, costs. We'll we'll leave it because they have different packages, and that's something they actually added to an existing package. Um, but it, it's as, you could pay as little. I've outsourced it for um, 40, 50 bucks a show. I, I've seen it to where they edit, and then they they'll put the social media out there, um, and then it's a local company called Adapting Social. Um, you know where I live here in New Jersey. Oh, New Jersey, where in New Jersey? Uh, Point Pleasant, so down the uh, down the uh, Jersey Shore. Got it. I I went to Rutgers, so oh cool. Same same here. Two the two years there, so don't live too far. Explains from there. a lot. No, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, get off. Let's disconnect Henry Henry again. <laughs> yeah. Easy to do. Let's they're go check, get a fat, get a fat the, sandwich. Uh, <laughs> the internet went yeah. down. They moved the trucks. The trucks are relocated. So oh really? Yeah, I forget where, but they scattered them. They're not on. Uh, on, on Cookman, not Cookman. Um, I forget the name Cook of the Douglas? street now. Oh yeah, they, right, right. They moved them around all over. They're not all grouped together in the same. I, I had the freshman twenty. I gained twenty pounds my freshman year, <laughs> eating fat cats and Mountain Dew. So. Yeah, just so you guys know, uh, Mark and Henry, if, if Rutgers University, I'm sure they have this at other schools, something similar, because basically college kids think they can eat anything. They have these things called fat sandwiches. And it's just terrible for you. It'll be like a big hoagie with like French fries, barbecue oh, sauce, chicken McNuggets, Stacked. mustard, you know, like everything. And they just spaghetti. Like I'll just put everything in these sandwiches. And basically kids go, you know, they go out drinking at night. Right. And then nice. when they're, they're when their wits are not about them at all, they go eat these things and then. Wake up the next morning and hate and themselves. You are feeling horrible. I think if you eat five, it used to be three, uh, but now it's five and thirty minutes. I think you can name the sandwich oh. after, and it's uh, and, and and you need and you need to keep it down. So I'll leave it at that. Yeah, yeah that's well, not going to be a good. Well, idea. that's the, that would be just so that you have some sort of. Uh, some sort of legacy because you'll be dead. Yes, know? right. Like, pretty much. At least you got a sandwich named after you. <laughs> hospital. I, I was born like a thousand steps from from the those trucks. So the hospital's right down the street, just in case. <laughs> nice. My first uh my first property was on Talmadge Street in New Brunswick. Okay. I bought no, exactly with my friends is. in a band and we lived there for a couple of years. So small world. Anyways, a little tangent. All right, let's yeah. get off the college tour. <laughs> and then come back to podcasting. I want to now, uh, th those are the questions I had primarily and, and Mark and, and, and Ethan will jump in with some more, but I wanted to turn it to you, Giuseppe. What, what questions do you have for us? Anything that we could share, whatever our opinion might be worth on as it relates to your show and growing your show? Yeah. So we, we were talking about one of the questions, which we, you know, Mark and I, we, we uh, were talking about franchise freedom, maybe rebranding the name as it is very specific. Yes. And I was good. I got cut off when I said, my opinion is you leave it alone. So we have differing opinions okay. there because as Mark mentioned himself, we find, I found that the, the more niche, the better. That's my two cents worth. What do you guys think? Yeah, it's a great name, you know? So gosh, I, I would want to like kind of, so, so the way that I approach the audience type of thing is, and we talk about this a lot, is like having that avatar, you know, mm -hmm. and who is your right. listener? Like imagine one person that's out there. I'm really excited about our NFT podcast because I feel like we have it, you know, and, and we know who these people are. There's a few, but like kind of we know how they think and how to address them and stuff like that. So franchise freedom, whether it's not the podcast that you have right now, it's a great name for a podcast. SEO is big with podcasts, for example, because it's so hard to get podcast SEO. So if you have something that says what the podcast is about in your name, it's so useful. Huge. Um, we just started a, 
we have a newsletter for our podcast, mm. right? And um, we were trying to figure out what to name it. You know, and our podcast is called Edge of NFT, which is great. We have NFT in the name of the podcast. Mm. Right. And we were thinking, oh, do we call it like the drop? Because people talk about dropping NFTs. We call it, you know, and I, I searched online for, you know, NFT newsletter. And the newsletters on NFTs that are out there, one's called like Zima Red. <laughs> right. Another one's called like, I don't know. They're just called nifty fun times or something. Right. Like right. the NFT newsletter not taken. Yeah. And I was like, guys, that's our name. We right. make it's it yours. simple, make it easy. Yeah, because to find. those other names are developed. Those are coders and those kind of guys who think that, you know, those project names are cool. Right. You know, as I'm looking at it and also to your point, Ethan, and, and I want Mark to come back on this is you, even in the bio that I opened, your focus on this corporate executive is even that much more definition of this avatar, which I really like. The word that I get hung up on is the freedom part, because I don't know if you're telling me that I want to get freedom from franchises or if the franchise is going to give me freedom. So that's just food for thought. But but Mark, why, why, why were you thinking he needed to broaden it or were you thinking he needs another show? What are your thoughts? Oh, no, it was, it was more that Giuseppe was saying, because I, I, from the title, mm. I thought that he was just having franchises on the podcast. Mm. Right. And I think that kind of is a thing. And if you wanted to root down that path, I think that's a really good way to go. Mm -hmm. When you were talking about earlier, Giuseppe, that you have a broad width of, of business people with lots of, and what, what, what the concern for me was that you were having to justify someone coming onto your podcast as a guest right. because they're like, well, I'm not a franchiser. Why would I come on your podcast? So that's, that's where I had the concern. I, I actually think if you just, the, the other thing you could do is bring interweave, into the podcast with a, I don't know, a digital marketer, something about franchising. So mm -hmm. it is present in your podcast. Right. It doesn't have to be the only thing you talk about. That's my only concern that you're going to lose, not necessarily because I think it will attract a, a niche audience, which we've talked loads of times that niche audiences have great community and great right. strength and a great following. So that's where I thought you were initially going was mm -hmm. that you were, there was always a, a, a link to franchises in your podcast. That's my only concern that you're going to lose some people guest wise and maybe even listeners because it sounds like you're just not just you are a podcast about franchising. Well, that's but that's opinion. his business, right? So I get what you're saying, Mark, but he is a franchise consultant. If this podcast doesn't in one way or another serve you in that business, then what the heck are you doing, right? You could start another podcast as a hobby, but this has got to serve you one way or another to help you get more clients or help the clients you do have or continue to educate those people who eventually will become a client of your consulting practice. Fair? Well, yeah. Sorry. It just I, That's absolutely fascinating, Henry, because you did say earlier on, Giuseppe, that your model for your mm -hmm. podcast is to generate contacts, generate networks, mm -hmm. generate people that might need your services. Right. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, Henry makes a really valid point because if that's your strategy, the name actually doesn't make that much. As long as you can justify it to people that might think they don't want to be on it, you sort of tell them the story behind the podcast if your strategy is to get to a million downloads, which I don't think any of us on this pod, on this mastermind are actually aiming for. I'm close. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, if but if your strategy is to get clients and get contacts and get networks, mm -hmm. then actually Hemi makes a valid point. It, it kind of talks to, to your personality and your, your, uh, your expertise. So there's always two sides to this. This it really depends on what you want as your strategy for your podcast. So yeah, to, so, yeah, to that point, I I, and I I appreciate that feedback. And that's we were, I was just talking with Henry. My numbers, my downloads are not great. Actually, they're much lower. And we're comparing notes with with Henry and some numbers. We were talking about just total downloads. And the, the first agency said, "Well, we just want this is such a select." group of people, right? It, a, a franchise is a large investment and many people may not have the means for that investment. So um, I have a lot of people that binge the show, they'll watch 10 episodes and then, and then contact me. But, um, but the, the, num the total numbers are, are 
surprisingly lower than I, than kind of I anticipated. So I don't know if I'm doing something wrong because what good is all this content if people aren't actually listening to it, you know, even with, with guests sharing the episodes and things like that. So I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or my agency or a combination of both. Um, I, I, I think that there's, I'm getting like two purposes here too, mm-hmm. you know, cause you mentioned, um, you know, the idea of bringing people on the podcast. I think there was a context where you said people would say they might not want to come on the podcast because they're not doing franchises. And you might say, hey, well, we're just talking about business, right? Um, but then when you go on other people's podcast, it, podcast, my guess is you actually do want the conversation to highlight that you're a franchise expert, right? Not an expert. Um, or just like I, a franchise a yeah, broker, I'll, you know, I'll, whatever. You know, I'll, I'll start with the freedom. That's why it's franchise freedom. I'll talk mm-hmm. about the freedoms that business ownership has offered me. Mm-hmm. And then I, and then we talk about, we dispel a lot of the myths because sometimes franchising may have a, a negative connotation because they don't, people don't understand what a franchise is. Mm-hmm. They think it's all McDonald's and, and fast food. So we'll educate. And then from the education, that's where I get a lot of my people con- contact me saying, Oh, I didn't know. I thought I needed like $5 million for McDonald's or a million dollars. I didn't realize franchising, you know, there, there are franchises at lower amounts. So it's, it's trying to get clear and just saying, let me just, you know, explain the franchising world. And then it's up to you if you want to continue that conversation. or if you You're educating this. people on this, but you're not educating them just because you're a nice guy. You're educating them because hopefully they'll pick up the phone and say, hey, you're the guy to help me find a franchise business. Yeah. Yep. In 20, in 20 minutes or less, you know, if you're a good fit, as many people want a franchise, but they don't want to follow the system. And I'm like, can't work with you. You're not, you're just not a good fit. You should stick, stay with the startup. Yeah. Um, even if you, if I refer to you a franchise, that franchise company is going to come back and say, yeah, this, this, this person is not looking to follow a system, which is fine, but we can't buy a franchise because they're going to be, it's going to be an issue. It's not going to work for them. Let me ask a question related to, you know, the, the audience and how are you using it? And I may have asked you this before. Are you prescribing episodes to clients on a particular topic that maybe they, you think they might need to, or they've asked about, do you say, Hey, listen to episode 420, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, have you used your content that way? Yes, absolutely. Excellent. There's Excellent. some evergreen stuff, the funding, the, the legal, just because, that could be an hour conversation in and of mm-hmm. itself. So I go talk the experts on there. And then once you're done, I'll make the introduction and then you can continue that conversation. That's great. Ab- absolutely. De- definitely take advantage of that. Yeah. Um, one of the things that, you know, you and I jumped around to a bunch of different topics. And one of the things I noticed, for example, so mm-hmm. my advice to, to Giuseppe has always been, you know, I can't tell you one reason or even two reasons why my audience has grown over six years, except for it's a cumulative bunch of little things, right? Right. Um, you, Ethan touched on the the whole SEO, though. I can tell you because one, one of the biggest values I get about every time somebody calls me is I ask them how they found me. Usually it's through the podcast. I'll ask how they found the podcast. Sometimes I remember, sometimes they don't. But I'm hearing more and more over the last couple of years, I searched online, right? Mm-hmm. And you and I talked about because podcast show discovery is still a needle in a haystack and only growing even more. So that's another reason why I like that you stay niche because you do have an opportunity, I think over time to build some SEO. Uh, That's going to mean better show notes pages, being more strategic about that, working with your agency to make sure that they're giving you that on the show notes page. And the fact, you know, these guys have been beating me up forever about starting to do video as well. That's a huge advantage that you're doing both. I think. Um, I will give a plug here. And if you, um, I'm really bad at referring things that have a, have some sort of a a kickback for me, but this would, (laughs) we've been using, um, we've been using Podetize, uh, for, as a podcast production. And and we've had Tom from Podetize come on. Um, they, uh, one of the features of what they do is create an SEO optimized blog Mm -hmm. post for each episode that you do. Um, so you know, not, not to make you think about switching agencies, but you could investigate that. Yeah. Um, if you do tell them I sent you, or if you want me to make a connection, I can, uh, we get a few free produ- episode productions or something like that. But, um, but yeah, um, 
that that's another thing like SEO is a, is a big deal. I, another thing, like I, I wanted to go back to your, um, your question again about the rebranding. Another thing to consider is like reconsider, you know, your ideal guest and your ideal listener, mm-hmm. you know, and then take, go from there on how you might adapt your branding or, or things. And also you, okay. when you think about ideal guest or ideal listener, you could think who is already, you know, who's my, maybe I only have 10 hardcore fans, but right. who's the hardcoreist of those fans and then go talk to them and say, okay. uh, if I were to, you know, actually ask them for a one-on-one conversation, they'll probably think it's cool, right? Oh, the podcast guy called me up and wants to have a chat and you call them up and you say, Hey, I'm just doing a little bit of research. I'm thinking about rebranding. I'm thinking about, you know, changing things up a little bit. Do you think that franchise freedom is a good name for my podcast? They'd be like, Oh yeah, totally. You know, or you'd be like, ah, yeah, I don't know what, yeah. what else you got, you know? And yeah. you, and you could say, Hey, what would you call my podcast? You mm-hmm. know, or like, what do you, what, what are you looking for when you listen to my podcast? And they could say, I'm looking for information about franchises or right. I'm looking for, you know, inspiration about business. Right. And like the, you can literally take those phrases that they say, oh, I guess I'm going to call it business inspiration podcast. Right. Oh, I guess I'm going to call it, you know, the inf- info about franchises podcast or whatever, you know, because some of those actual words and phrases that people mm-hmm. use can be so essential. And the same thing with the well, guests. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, oh, you came on this podcast. What made you want to come on this podcast? You know, what are you getting out of it? And mm-hmm. those words and phrases can be essential to the branding of, of what you do and, and doubling down on what's most beneficial. I appreciate that. that makes yeah, a couple sense. of things on that is I always ask people, so what does this mean to What does the Franchise Freedom Podcast mean to you? What does that mean to you? What does that say to you? The other thing on, on, on Ethan's point is, just off the top of your head, anecdotally, would you say that most of the people that you've placed in the franchise in the last year did, in fact, come from the corporate world? Yes. Would you say that most of them fell into the category of they needed a lot of education? They didn't know it was more than just McDonald's or or not? Or were they more savvy as to what a franchise is? Uh, some Some a little bit more homework than others. But yes, a lot of them just... They like the idea of franchising since they didn't have to start from scratch, but yeah, a lot of, a lot of education, but they needed the education. Okay. Correct. Right. So, so that, I mean, that tells me that that, that is, that's one of the great things you could continue to do through the podcast. Like you have been doing is provide that education. Right. And like you said, it is, I've heard that a million times, even for myself, I've been listening to your show for two years and mm. finally decided to call you. Right. Yes. Yes. That, I hear that again and again from podcasters. Or I downloaded your book a year ago. I still haven't read it, but I figured yeah. I'd reach out. the The timing the timing was right, but um, Great. yeah. And I've I've had I've been I, I downloaded your book. I listened to a bunch of your shows, and now it's that buyer's journey. <clears throat> nine nine months later, twelve months later, and they're finally contacting you. Yeah, so, well, that's no. all about marketing, though, isn't it? it, it mm-hmm. Like they, you have to have lots of touch points, and and I right. think sharing on different social media, maybe get some better SEO on your website regarding your podcast. Cause it's not just one, there's not going to be one conversation you have w- with a guest and they're suddenly like, right. I need Giuseppe right. to do my, my franchise. It's going to be, it's an evolution. It's like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm being told on social media about posting on Facebook groups for my property business. Right. And I'm being told it might take six months well, maybe not as long as six months, three months. Mm-hmm. But if you post three, four times a week in this group, there will be X, there will be Y, right. there'll be this interest, that interest. So you do have to sort of think of it as a sort of long game. But if you can have touch points where A, you're consistent, you're releasing every week and people know where to find you and come back to you. And B, maybe on social media or in other places, word of mouth as well as uh, SEO, you're you're building those touch points. There's more likelihood of them coming to you as a consultant, as a, fr- as a franchise consultant. Yeah. Someone, the previous, the first agent, he said, omnipresence, you're kind of all over. You're on, so you're on social, you got the podcast, you got, you have YouTube, you have the blog. So you're around there. And eventually when the timing is right, you know, we're not selling a widget or something, mm-hmm. small ticket. So, so maybe it's just, the education, education. And finally, you know, for many cases, COVID hit and said, you know what, I don't want to go back to the office. Let me see. Like, this is the time. This is the turning point in my life or career to make that change. So it's sometimes, as you mentioned, 
uh, Mark, it's all about, it just has to be the right timing. So uh, absolutely. Can, can, I, can I agree more? Just have, just trying to be as consistent as possible. Yeah. And, and also do your day job, right? Um, all right. It's the top of the hour. Usually we go a couple of minutes, but uh, just wanted to, to just say thank you, Giuseppe. Thanks for coming on and sharing. Uh, you know, sometimes it's, you know, you're sharing stuff that maybe you're not as comfortable sharing. So I appreciate you being transparent, having this conversation with us. We always learn something and hopefully you got something out of it as well. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. And I, I appreciate the feedback. I didn't, I didn't know really what to expect today, but this was great. <laughs> I, I learned a lot and uh, I have some homework to do. So I, again, I, I appreciate the feedback and looking forward to having a chat maybe in the near future. Yeah. You're always welcome to come back anytime, uh, Giuseppe. Uh, awesome. Thanks. Let us know. You can jump on. Great. Thank you very much. It was great meeting y'all. Thanks, Giuseppe. Appreciate Take it. Take care, Mark. Thanks a lot. You Cheers, guys. Thank you, guys. Talk to you soon. Chat Bye. soon. Bye.